Rhydon is one of the most classic Pokemon of all time. It was one of the very first Pokemon created, and despite getting an evolution in Gen 4, it's still a beast. It's got amazing physical bulk naturally, along with that huge base 130 attack, and it can even abuse the Eviolite item, which gives it a 50% buff to both defenses. So it has a usually useless ability in Lightning Rod, which grants it immunity to Electric, because it's obviously already a ground type, but we can actually bust out Terra Flying or Water to become a defensive monster while not having to worry about any electric. Staying alive all day gives us time to set up a Swords Dance to double our attack. Then we fire off really hard hitting Stab Earthquakes along with Stone Edge while tanking hits. Throw in a little Fire Punch for some coverage, and people honestly sleep on Rhydon in a generation where it's really never been better. Kind of. Rhydon to me is like an old friend that you just know that you can count on. I mean, unless... Unless you're going up against like a singular blade of grass or a drop of water. But for the most part, guy is solid and doesn't get enough love. So that is what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button to help me on my way to 400k. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Grimmsnarl. Buddy comes in here with his big old muscles and snatched waist. And I've got myself the lead mixed Infernape. So, first of all, one problem with Grimmsnarl is you just never know what this thing is going to do. And... Just kidding. Obviously, it's gonna be light clay with dual screen, so that's exactly what this thing's gonna do with this little prankster shenanigans. I, however, am here with my stick tail to just, uh, just lay down some stealth rock and know that, in general, I can actually hit this thing decently hard with an overheat. So I wanna try to get some chip on the Grimmsnarl just because this thing's gonna be annoying. Uh, the screens are gonna dampen my offenses quite a bit. As I get the overheat off before the light screen comes through, I actually am able to do a nice big chunk, and they are gonna end up going right for that spirit break. So just going for the damage on the ape, and I do actually live that, which is pretty clutch. So at this point, I have a couple different options. Now, I could go for a close combat and try to get some damage here, but also, I looking at it, they don't have any stealth rock up. I could consider saving Infernape for later, um, and I have one, you know, basically one life orb hit left in me. So I do conserve the Infernape maybe for a mock punch later. I decide to go into the Dragalgy, as it actually reveals it's gonna go for the Sucker Punch. So my ape actually would've got Sucker Punch to hell anyway, so that actually works out now. At this point, I know that they're probably afraid of a Sludge Wave, and I'm kind of expecting them to switch into Iron Treads. So instead of going for that, I actually am going to bust out the Flip Turn. But of course, they end up just going for the Light Screen. And now I'm out here flipping and turning for no damn reason. So here's the situation. I actually know that Toxicity can set up in the face of Grimmsnarl relatively safely. You know, we've seen the Sucker Punch. We, we know the moveset at this point, and I am, of course, going to be the weird physical attacking Toxicity. So... Goal number one is to try to get up at least one shift gear. Now they go for the Sucker Punch, basically just trying to get some damage before they go down. And then I'm like, oh no no, I'm actually, I'm actually over here playing with gears, bro. I'm raising my speed all crazy, and I get that physical attack boost. So this is of course, Technician Toxicity to basically just surprising people. So I realize I'm kind of free to just go for another shift gear here, thinking maybe they switch. However, they do not, and as I set up this next shift gear, there is one looming problem, and it's a gooey fella. See, basically, in the back they have a ditto, who, essentially, it can come in, and as they go for the Sucker Punch here, as I obviously just need to get some damage on the thing, the Sucker Punch does a whole lot, and uh, that is kind of going to foil my plans a bit, because as Ditto is able to now switch in, it does in fact copy the stat changes, and with a built-in Choice Scarf, Ditto is always a great answer to set up. So they're just going to go right into the little Jelly, who is always just foiling my damn plans. Now it's gonna turn into me, and while it's not the end of the world, I actually, looking a few plays ahead, them going into Ditto here is bad for Toxicity. I'm gonna have to sack this thing off because I've taken too much damage from the Sucker Punch. They get my attack boost and a Thunder Punch slash kick to the face. Does kill my Toxicity, but what it now does is actually is gonna open the door for our big Rhydon fella. Also, the Reflect goes away, which is great. And now it's time to bring in the Rhydon. So first of all, Ditto is still an issue, as I'm able to potentially set up here. It can just come back in later, be faster than me, and then have a super effective Earthquake. But we have a plan, and here's how we're going to do it. So first of all, I want to go for the Swords Dance. I need all the attack I can get here. Uh, Rhydon really, really shines in terms of being able to just take attacks, especially on the physical side, pretty much all day long. And if you can set up a Swords Dance, you can take hits to the face and then just one hit KO stuff in return and basically stonk. So I set up the Swords Dance here. Attack is looking pretty damn crazy. Also, as they switch into the Dragonite, good to know they do take the Stealth Rock damage, which is gonna break this thing's uh, multi-scale ability, which is great, because now, as they just go for the Dragon Claw here, I can take that, like, no problem, right to the horn. And I do connect on a Stone Edge, which is fantastic, is able to take care of the Dragonite, and we basically grab that KO for free. 
And just like that, we're actually rolling with the ride on pretty well here. So, of course, the, the glaring problem being freaking Ditto is just going to come right back in. Now, as we know that they're just going to be able to outspeed and go for an Earthquake, I probably die to that after the Swords Dance. But also, here's the thing. Rhydon came prepared for this little Ditto matchup, because what I can do is actually bust out the Terra Flying, and what Ditto failed to consider is that it is, in fact, Rhydon's birthday. You're going to bust out the balloons and be able to float right above the Earthquake, which is amazing. At least, if, if they predict this and go for Stone Edge, I'm letting them have it. But, as I put the balloons on, they are going to bust out the Earthquake, and not today, says Drillionaire. Now I can fire off an Earthquake in return, and that is going to eliminate the freaking Ditto threat. So, Brydon is really one of the mon- I bet any mon that has any 4 times weaknesses benefited just so much in this generation from Terra. Plus, Rhydon with the little wombo combo of, you know, Lightning Rod actually being useful these days, not having to worry about Electric now. Us Rhydon fans are actually eating pretty good. So, as they bring in the Iron Treads, this fella is a little bit of a problem. First of all, it is gonna get a booster energy attack, which means it's at least not a special attacker, which is nice. However, as I go for the Earthquake, they are going to bust out, it turns out they're going to pull out some freaking balloons of their own. So, it actually, it, tr it truly is both of our birthdays and we're just out here partying. Except for the fact that now, with this Earthquake, I've in fact been Una reversed. So, you know, so it happens. Anyway, I, they actually end up going for the knockoff here, which is going to get rid of my Eevee Light. And that's not great, because now I, I lose that defensive buff. But more importantly, it was the cool little rock I had in my pocket. So with that, at this point, Elite, here's the good thing. I do have the Stone Edge coverage, and as they go for the Rapid Spin, they likely don't have anything else to really hit me with. It is going to get rid of the Stealth Rock, but I at least take it nicely. And now, as I lose one super effective stab with the Earthquake, I do connect on my other with the Stone Edge. So that is going to take care of both the Terra and the Roly Polioli, and that is pretty nice because... As they're able to bring in the Quackaval here, this thing is also a physical attacker, which is exactly what we're looking for when you ride on. I don't have my Eevee Light, but check this out. They go for the Aqua Step, no longer super effective, and I live it with 10 HP, which is actually hilarious. And what's even more funny is they turn they straight up just turn the switch off after that. Even bet I actually do get to see the earthquake come through, and yeah, that just kills. So. Uh, yeah, buddy was pissed off at the ride on, and I don't blame him. Matt is gonna finish off the match, so. Right on D's nuts, of course. Now, with that, we also have another match for you because, you know, why not? And also, if you've stuck around this far into the video, you should probably just hit that like button. It really does help out the video. And uh, you know, with that, let's, let's jump into it. So, this time, my opponent is going to lead off with the Haxorus, which, in general, ain't that bad, except for the fact that I know it's probably going to go for a Dragon Dance turn one. And that's actually not super ideal. Now, Infernape is, of course, just going to lay down some Stealth Rock. I got to stop leading with this, with this Infernape. I just kind of like... I like this guy's elite. Regardless, I set up my rocks and then they go ahead. Yeah, they do Dragon Dance turn one, which is going to allow this thing to be faster. And then as I'm looking at it, if they've got the Earthquake coverage, we've got ourselves a dead fiery monkey on our hands. Now, I could switch into the Iron Jugulus expecting that, but I decided to stay in here and it works out in my favor because as they instead go for the Dragon Claw, likely expecting that switch, I am able to take that at least uh, barely. And as I get off the close combat, it actually doesn't end up knocking this thing out, which Actually, is fine, because I do, in fact, live my Life Orb recoil, and now I actually have the priority Mach Punch. And as I do take care of the Hacks Wrist, I am going to lose the Infernape. But that's a trade I am willing to make, because, you know, I got up my Stealth Rock, took care of Hacks Wrist, and now we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned uh, empty battlefield. I figure, you know who's the best guy to come in and just liven the place up? Is my dude Chris P. Bacon. I'm going to go into the Grumpig here, and if you haven't peeped the, uh, the Grumpig video, you should... I, I, I recommend it. This thing... This thing is crazy. So, as I go to Grumpig, they actually bring in the Annihilate, which is actually, we're a couple of pigs who have a matchup against each other. Of course, I'm weak to, you know, the Ghost, he's weak to the Psychic. I decide I can take at least one Rage Fist as long as I haven't touched it yet. So, I decide to go for the Nasty Plot, as they are just going to directly Rage Fist, which does in fact hurt, bop you right to the snout, but never a better time for a little bit of lunch right after getting socked to the nose. I'm going to bust the, uh, the Salic Berry out, that is going to boost my speed. And just like that, Grumpig is actually faster than basically everything they've got there. So, first of all, I was really hoping they were going to go for something maybe like a bulk up, because as I'm able to finish it off with a Psychic Noise, which is always nice, the problem is I am now just in danger from priority. And as they're actually going to bring in the Satterledge, this Sword Hand Bastard, of course, most of the time is going to have the, the Shadow Sneak. So, I do take just a bit more damage than it would have been would have been nice, because I have the Earth Power coverage. But of course they're going to bust out the Shadow Sneak and not Grumpig's day. So if you want to watch this Grumpig belch on a bunch of stuff, 
Go watch my Grumpig video, I, I recommend. Anyway, with that, I now have a revenge switch in. And actually, a decent check to this is going to be the Rhydon, because I know I can take a physical attack like ain't nobody's business. And I can also pull out a little Swords Dance, and we look really good against basically whatever they have left. So, I am going to go right for that. I expect maybe a switch and a potentially Lantern. Turns out they're just going to go for the Shadow Claw, likely just rolling for the, like a crit, but it does a little chunk as now I'm extra sharp. This drill is not to be messed with because after a Swords Dance, I, I'm basically in range to Oko the remainder of the team if possible. So they're actually just going to go for another Shadow Claw here. Does get the crit this time and that's going to bring me just below half, which is unfortunate. At least, however, I do finish it with that Earthquake and now we get to see what the answer is are going to be to the Rhydon. We're slow, but we're bulky, and I have a Swords Dance, so I mean, that's a recipe for success, baby. Now, they decide to bring in the Glamora. First of all, I'm working with a different Terra type this time. I'm actually Terra Water, because I, I find myself needing the water resistance. The problem is, I feel like that doesn't save me from an Earth Power, so I decided to stay in and Rod Dog it, and they actually are going to go for the late game Stealth Rock here, and that is great for me, because then I can fire off the Quake, and that takes care of Glamora, which, you know, is nice. It does, of course, you pop it like a damn pinata and then put some toxic debris around. But, I mean, hey, that's fine. Down goes Glamora, pretty big threat. And now they're down to, what, two Pokemon left. First, they have the Heracross, which obviously is an offensive answer with the Fighting Stab versus uh, the right on here. And then they also have the Lantern. So, here's how it's going to work out. I am going to bust out the Terra Water this time because I do not want to be hit by a close combat. And with a little little fountain on my head and my Eevee Light defenses, I should be able uh, to take at least one of them, at least I'm hoping. So I pull out the Terra Water this time. It is also important to note that this is super solid because people will try to then like hit you with an electric attack and then boom, Lightning Rod comes in clutch. They are gonna bust out the Brick Break, which I live easily. You cannot break this Brick, baby. I then fire off the Fire Punch. I have the coverage and with the Swords Dance that does uh, knock out the Heracross. So that is amazing. Now, Final Mon being Lantern, I would love if they would click a Thunderbolt here just because then I could show off the Lightning Rod. They, uh, I imagine they probably know that and then they're just gonna head out. So Rhydon once again coming in extremely clutch and just pulling out the dub. I feel like just people just are not putting respect on the Rhydon and it, it comes out in our favor. So I do actually in fact have one more bonus match for you just because this team is a good time and I'm having fun with it. So let's go ahead, let's keep it rolling and let's, let's jump into it against a very scary squad. So this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Blissey. Of course you already know I got the mixtape and this thing's looking like fried eggs in the morning. as a perfect matchup for me. Now I don't have much interest in just going right for the close combat because this is a rock monkey and I'm here to freaking set up to- I, I promise I'll work up a new lead here <laughs> pretty soon with the new squad. Anyway, as I go for the stealth rock here they're actually going to end up swapping right into the Zapdos who is in fact shiny but you can't really tell. But I just set up my Stealth Rock and I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and set these here, Mr. Bird, and I don't want any business with that. So I can go for an Overheat and get some pretty good damage, but what I also have is the check to Zapdos that's been checking this damn thing for 30 freaking years. And I can go right into the Rhydon because as they actually end up going for the Volt Switch, that gives me Lightning Rod, which, you know, doesn't, it doesn't do anything because I'm ground type anyway, but it looks cool and you should have aimed for the horn. Now... With that, I am actually pretty free to set up a Swords Dance here. I'm thinking, you know, why not get the get the guy going? I, obviously, I have the option to Terra against some of their threats that they do have on the ride on, and that is mostly going to be this asshole. They, they do go into the Ogre Pond. It is going to be Wellspring, and this is an interesting matchup. So, first of all, this thing can do one of two things, or I guess three. Either it's going to Swords Dance, or it's going to go for the Ivy Cudgel or the Horn Leech. Now... As I'm going to bust out the Terra Water, I'm really banking on the fact that they probably just go for the Ivy Cudgel. And uh, with the Fountain on my head, at least I can resist that. If they do Horn Leech, you know, regardless, it's super effective and ouch anyway. But they do bust out the Ivy Cudgel. Smack me with a stick because we're feeling kinky, and that doesn't really hurt me at all. Even with a critical hit, it does nothing. Now, I do connect on a Stone Edge, which is great because after a Swords Dance, that kills the Ogre Pond. And that's actually one of the biggest threats on the squad out of the way. And I'd love to not have to worry about that. Now, here's the funny part. They actually are going to bring back in the Zapdos. Probably just off of instinct being like, oh, they go water, I go Zapdos. And then immediately they realize, fuck, I actually, they, they saw the lightning rod. They cannot go for a thunderbolt. Instead, they decide to go for the heat wave, probably try to roll for the burn, which does not come through. And I actually connect on another stone edge. So I am probably due to miss every stone edge in the near future. But I mean, that's fine because I take care of the Zapdos. And I think the Lightning Rod just played some mind games for us there <laughs> and saved us a bit. So, 
As they now bring in Darkrai, if I was full health, I believe I could take a Dark Pulse. I am, in fact, a little hurt, so a Dark Pulse actually does kill me. So that is unfortunate. As the Rhydon goes down, I actually have the door decently open for the Infernape switch in here. That's mostly just because... While Darkrai doesn't want to be hit with a close combat, they also don't have much that really wants to switch into it. It's going to take a, anything is going to take, you know, a pretty good chunk here. So I am going to go right for that close combat. As I know, unless this thing has Psychic, I'm probably in good shape here. They do just fire off the Dark Pulse, which does do a round half, does not get the flinch, luckily. And then I just beat the hell out of the Ghost Boy, which the critical hit is overkill, because that is going to be a deadass Darkrai, who... May have been choiced, I'm actually not sure on the damage rolls, but what I do know for certain is that thing is going to be Dark Pulse and in Hell. So, now they can switch into a nice little revenge here. And there is a big glaring problem on their side of the field, which is this freaking Iron Valiant. Late game Valiant is very scary. Mostly because a lot of the time it's going to be booster energy. So it does immediately get that quark drive, and it's the speed boost. So the problem is this thing is faster than everything I've got. And I'm like, well, okay, here's the thing. I actually decide to switch into the Grum Pig, mostly because, you know, I can kind of take attacks from this and then maybe get off like a belch would be the most satisfying thing ever. And that's kind of the, the, the plan for the short term. So as they go for the Moon Blast, it does not knock me into Salic Rain, so I cannot click belch. And it gets a special attack drop. And while I'm like, okay, this is fine, I can at least take another one, they're going to pull out a Terra here. I do want to try to get some chip on this thing because... Valiant is a, a, a large problem. So they actually are going to end up going for the Terra Fairy, which I'm like, okay, that's just going to be some da enough damage for a Moonblast to kill, and then I can figure out a plan B. But instead, they actually go for the Calm Mind, which is kind of worst case scenario in this situation, just because all I can really do is hit this thing with Psychic Noise and be like, hey, you can't heal anymore. And they're like, I, don't, I wasn't planning on healing anyway, and that's not doing any damage. And I'm like, well, I've got my kind of back against the wall here, with the Grumpig. One thing I can try to be on my side to get around this is if they don't set up more combines, but of course, they are going to go for a second one there. And I'm like, okay, well, if that's the game they want to play, I kind of have a, a little bit of a way around this, and that's just kind of through continual chip, potential crit rolls, if they want to try to get greedy. And then one good thing is I do have some defensive option in the back, at least with the Assault Vest Dragalgy, potentially with Toxtricity being able to resist uh, this thing's Moonblast or whatever. They are, I'm really hoping that they were going to go for the attack there, but they just go for another Calm Mind. And now, this Grum Pig has just become a straight up setup fodder at this point, and as I continue Psychic Noise, and I'm not going to get any damn crits out here. So, <laughs> Grum Pig now, I'm like, surely they, I'm just mashing A at this point. They are going to fire off. Uh, the Moon Blast, this thing is now at, what, plus three special attack and special defense. And yeah, the power of the Moon is going to kill my, my damn Grum Pig. So now this thing has become way bigger of an issue than, you know, it once was. But I decide, okay, Toxicity, first of all, isn't going to do much for me in the rest of this matchup. And if I can somehow live a Moon Blast here, that would actually be, be kind of sweet. So I'm going to try it out. We bring in Jimi Hendrix. And as they do fire off the blast, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I resist. I have decent special defense. The three calm mines is, is too much. That's, yeah, that's going to kill the Toxicity. It does get a crit, which definitely I don't think mattered. I mean, it's kind of wishful thinking in, you know, Toxicity being able to tank that. We don't, and that's yeah, fine. So the only way I can get around this is with Drag Algae. I'm assault vested. I am especially defensive as hell. And if there's anything that has a shot to take an attack here, it's definitely Mystery the freaking Seahorse. So... They are going to pull out the Moon Blast with the Terra, with the three Calm Mines. I'm like, yeah, I probably died. But I live it with six HP, which is actually insane. And not only that, but then a Sludge Wave after the plus three special defense boost with adaptability and stab is able to take care of the Valiant, which now has brought some life back into the match here. It's not, it's definitely not over, but getting through that Valiant definitely makes it a lot easier because, you know, I, I essentially got swept of... Everything I had after, if Dragalgy got O-Code there. And now, this draws in the Blaziken, who is another fellow that just has the ability to get out of hand. Now, at this point, they have two Mons left. It's going to be Blaziken, along with the Blissey in the back. I decide it's in my best interest to stay in here. If they want to set up a Swords Dance, that's the only way this thing can eventually, you know, end up sweeping the squad. So as I go for the Draco Major, they actually are just going to run the Protect, which is fine by me, because, you know, they're now going to get, you know, the free Speed Boost. It is going to be faster even than Jugulus after my booster energy once I bring that thing in in this next speed boost turn. So they do actually just go for the fire punch. That is going to finish off the drag algae. But the main thing was keeping this thing from going for the sword stance. Because without a sword stance, it's not going to have quite enough damage 
to knock out Iron Jugulus. So I do need to bring this thing in, which is going to use up my booster energy. And they're kind of, we have a really interesting late game here. Because while they do have the Blissey to switch in, um, the Blaziken, it knows it doesn't have enough damage to, to knock me out here. So we really just needed to keep it from going from that Sword Dance. So the bad thing for me is I do have to connect on a Hurricane if I want to take care of the Blaziken. So that's what I click. They are actually going to end up switching right into, you know, the best thing to handle this defensively, which is, of course, freaking Blissey, who is always just a glaring problem in the back of the squad if I'm trying to set up anything on the special side. So Hurricane hits, and it basically heals the damn thing because this thing has a special defense and HP stat of 1,000. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not getting anywhere with that, but... What I can do here is this. I actually am pretty free to bring in Infernape. If it has any damage move, it's more than likely going to be Seismic Toss. In which case, I can take one of those because I have over 50 HP. So, as I bring in Infernape here, they actually are going to set up the Stealth Rock. And now, with this matchup, we are actually, we have the upper hand here. Because either, you know, they stay in here and let Blissey take a close combat. Or, they switch into the Blaziken, who, you know, also doesn't really want to take a close combat. And as long as I have Infernape healthy to, to kill the Blissey, we're actually going to be good. So, they do actually just stay in. I close combat the shit out of that uh, punching bag of an egg. And now there's just yolk everywhere. So, that takes care of the Blissey, which is perfect. And now we've got ourselves a little 2v1. While they have the Blaziken, I have, you know, Infernape left still, who should be able to get me a little value out of going for a Mach Punch. I imagine, you know, they go for the Protect here, which will give it the speed boost, allow it to outspeed... And then the ape goes down, but then it's going to be a little, little, little jugulous on Blaziken action. This is a really close kind of late game here. So they do go for the protect that is going to block the mock punch, of course, um, but it also is going to uh, give it the speed boost to allow it to be faster than not only ape but also, you know, the jugulous on this next turn. And uh, we, we've got ourselves a spot where I mean, basically have no value out of this thing. I kind of just have to go for that mock punch. Which is actually really nice because it does a great amount of chip and it honestly puts the little amount of pressure off of Jugulus and having to click the Hurricane for the kill. Also, it helps my cause a bit because as they go for the close combat, it is going to kill the ape, but it does give them that minus one to special defense. And now, as they get their second speed boost, this thing is running about quick as hell. Jugulus is at full health. The one thing we do have going against us is the fact that they did set up the Stealth Rock and that's... Not great news, because I could comfortably live in close combat without that, but with that Stealth Rock chip, it's looking real close on whether or not this thing gets a kill. So, the entire match has come down to this turn. They do outspeed, punch me with the close combat, but we live it with 7 HP, which is actually insane. And with a second special defense boost, that Dark Pulse comes through. I don't have to worry about missing the Hurricane, and that is going to kill the Blaziken. And that is going to be the end of the match. I thought that was a wild... A finish to that one and honestly a really good game so with that that's gonna do it for the video thank you guys very much for sticking around if you've made it this far i really do appreciate the support and uh, i will catch you next time peace out